We're talking reef tank pollutants. Ever wonder what the effects of coral toxins, rusty gear, impurities and additives or salt mixes, trace element products, and environmental pollutants like the surrounding air or your hands have on your tank? How about even better, what to do so they have near zero effect on your tank? All that is coming up. Hi, I'm Ryan, and this is the 52SE Guide to Reefing. In the last two episodes, we covered the two biggest sources of pollutants in a marine tank, foods and tap water. This week, we take the same approach to all the other material pollutive sources in the tank. We start with the problem those pollutives pose for reefers, the solution for 80% of us, and then what to do if you're in the minority where an alternative solution is necessary. Today's pollution challenges are multifaceted, most of them accumulative and effects show up over time. Misdiagnosed 90% of the time. First one, corals, algae, dinoflagellates, and other organisms in the tank produce biochemicals or toxins and then release them into their environment to inhibit growth or survival of other nearby organisms and maintain that territory. In the ocean, those toxins rapidly dilute, often within inches of leaving the coral, but in a closed system like a reef tank, they just build up and stress out everything inside, sometimes making them more susceptible to other issues other times ending in direct mortalities. Second, most of us dose chemicals to the tank daily or weekly, which are marketed as beneficial to the tank, but only when formulated and used correctly. If they're overused or poorly designed, the beneficial elements that support or enhance biology become elemental pollution or poisons. Third, there are aerosolized or gas toxins in the air surrounding the tank that most of us never stop to consider, but get mixed in as the surface of the water tumbles or via the protein skimmer whisking the room's air and your tank water together. Fourth, whatever's on your hands gets mixed in as well. Lotions, hand soaps, laundry soaps, oils, fragrances, petroleum products, disinfectants, garden sprays, basically anything that you might have touched today. Fifth, all the gear in our tanks is made from plastics or metals that can release contaminants into the tank over time, most commonly when they get damaged, malfunction, or the seals fail. The results of this catastrophic, but also completely avoidable in a vast majority of cases. Okay, sounds heavy, but the solution is light and practices that many of us are already doing. The solution for 80% of us is just this. Select a clean additive system that addresses these issues. We use Triton on the 52SE tanks, but there are a few different additive approaches that we'll share today that meet the standards that we discussed today. Clean your pumps and gear biannually, do your 35% monthly, 10% weekly, or 1.5% daily water changes, run either carbon or ozone, and the resin like Purit in the case of an emergency. These proactive solutions done deliberately with a purpose will solve all of these challenges. The real value of this video is understand why the good practices that you're already doing are why you're successful. Don't stop doing them or they're inevitable outcomes. They just take a while to materialize. For everyone else, consider the value of initiating good practices, as well as what to do when you're part of the 20% that fall outside the general counsel and need to apply a full understanding of these topics to complex situations. 